A lot of the drugs that we use every day, we take for granted. They must be safe. We use them a long time. The FDA has approved them. Big Pharma has created them with careful experimentation. Think again. Look at drugs like Darvon, which is used for pain medication. For 50 years, it's on the market and taken off about a year ago because they found it causes fatal cardiac rhythm disturbances. Look at the drug Vax that was taken off the market and Vextra, its partner, because of what Big Pharma did to conceal information about the fact that these NSAIDs actually cause an increase in the rate of heart attacks and strokes. Now we start looking at aspirin thinking, aspirin, could that be a problem? I mean, we use that so often to prevent heart attacks and strokes, and we take it as though it's just like water. It must be safe because the AMA recommends it. The heart associations do. Uh, Big Pharma certainly does. So what's wrong with it? Well, first of all, we know that aspirin is something that causes stomach ulcers in just about everybody. Just about everybody. In a study that was done maybe five or ten years ago, published in the New England Journal of Medicine, they looked at people who were taking a baby aspirin every day for heart attack prophylaxis. And at the end of the year, they endoscoped these people, and 28% of those people had an ulcer that was three millimeters or bigger, and the bulk of them had irritation and bleeding. So it's not like a few people get this side, effect, this side effect. It's like it's not a side effect at all. It's an effect that we expect to happen. And yet it has some positive benefits for people who have had a heart attack because we know that platelet aggregation and blood thickness is a problem that leads to heart attack and stroke. So we'd rather not have that. So that's the reason why we're so adamant about the use of aspirin. But is aspirin the only thing that we could use? Are there other alternatives? The answer to that is yes, of course. But before we get to that, what, this, what I'm getting to in this presentation today is that people who take aspirin don't just have the, the side effect of bleeding they also have problems with allergic reactions, with angioedema, uh, with anaphylactic reactions, with rashes. It can be a real problem to try and control. And now we're finding that it even can cause a doubling in the risk of wet macular degeneration, which is the most serious form of macular degeneration that often leads to blindness. It doubles the risk. Instead of four people out of a hundred, instead of two people out of a hundred having wet macular degeneration, if they're on aspirin, it goes up to four. So the authors of the article concluded that, well, you know, it's bad to have macular degeneration, but it's worth, worse to have a heart attack or stroke. Now, I understand the logic of that, but it's so thin in its reasoning. Why don't we look at what's happening if we use other forms of anticoagulation? What happens if we use some things like, like fish oil and see what that does? Uh, to anticoagulation. We know that it does a lot to thin blood out. It works the same way that, that aspirin does to try and keep platelets from being so sticky. Or things like natokinase, a beautiful anticoagulant that's much like heparin that's from, from uh, just soybean extract. Or things like lumbrokinase, which is much like that except it's, it's extracted from earthworms. And ginkgo biloba and, and vitamin E. There are many other forms of anticoagulation that should be tested by our National Institutes of Health, particularly our, our, our section that's on complementary and alternative medicine. Why aren't we doing head-on studies with aspirin, with Coumadin, with Plavix, some of the new drugs that are out that are, are used uh, uh, for anticoagulation, and compare them with fish oil, with natokinase, with lumbrokinase, with ginkgo, etc. It would seem like it would make a lot of sense. And it's not like aspirin is the end-all uh, for people who have cardiovascular risk because a certain percentage of people are going to have bleeds. And if they have bleeds, aspirin thins blood out, and that's going to make them worse. So in a small percentage of cases, you're going to see more hemorrhagic stroke, or if you've had a heart attack that's hemorrhagic, you're in big problems. So I think we need more comparative clinical trials. We need an open mind about looking at alternatives that are not in the mainstream, that are not patentable, that are not connected to big pharma or the insurance industry or the CDC or the FDA, just maybe our good old National Institutes of Health. Daily aspirin, one way to solve the problem, many other ways that need to be investigated that are likely far safer.